fifth overall studio album by Queen is a bit of a disappointment if I'm really honest because uh, the band was just driving off of the or building off of the success of A Night at the Opera and then we have of course the sequel A Day at the Razor so this is the day album um, if you would say Instead of the night record, night at the opera. This is requested by the Black, uh, Black Queen, I believe. He requested some Queen records that I didn't review of the 70s, so there we are. Um, yeah, and this was for, I think, a while one of my favorite Queen records of all time, but I have re listened to it again, and um, well, it's not as good as I remembered it to be, so I'm gonna break that down for you. Uh, we start off with the opening song. Uh, you tie your mother down. This is a really energetic track that really gets you into the zone. Just Freddie Mercury uh, repeating over and over, tie your mother down. Um, you ain't no friend of mine. That's, that is also one vocal range that he really delivers with that line. Really great track to open up this, uh, this, uh, this record. Really great, really energetic song. Really love it. Uh, you Take My Breath Away is one of my favorite. This is written by Freddie Mercury and this is basically one of his solo tracks because he, um, I believe you have a bit, um, there's a bit of bass on there by John Deacon but uh, besides that it is all uh, Freddie Mercury. He just, it's just all the piano, all that you hear is the piano and just his, uh, just his clean singing voice. This, this track is really clean, there are no not a lot of fancy production tags, um, not anything crazy happening on this track. But the thing is, why this track is so special is because um, it is just pure a musician playing his instrument, and you can definitely hear that in this track. And it is five minutes long, so um, you can call it a drag out or something. But I think it is uh, pure magic that they are just playing with this track. I really love it, and I think it is a classic by the band. Check it out if you haven't already. Uh, Long Away is a, a pretty good follow up to that, but it is a bit, um, it, yeah, you you are in a, in a uh, bit of a relaxing state after uh, the second track and then you get Long Away, which is a good follow up track, but I think um, this song is a bit too, um, yeah, it is not really heavy, but it is too heavy uh, to follow up, you take my breath away if you, if you can understand me, you are just really, um, um, you, you've just listened to a really la relaxed song and then a Queen just throws long away at you. So, this song is a bit of a, um, um, yeah, not the best follow up song, I would say, after that really special song. But, I mean, how are you gonna follow that up? That is a good question. Uh, the Millionaire Waltz is also a pretty interesting song as well, I think. Um, there are some really conventional beats on there. I think I think the drumming on there by Roger Taylor is really tremendous, and um, just Mercury vocals, uh, vocal performances are really really tight on this track. Uh, really a great follow-up to Long Away. Uh, actually, better because that song is only three and a half minutes long. And I think the Millionaire Waltz is slightly better because it uh, feels a bit more polished. It is a bit more streamlined. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a great track and. Um, this is also written by Mercury, so that may explain why. Uh, you and I is, yeah, in my opinion, one of the weakest tracks, and yeah, it is written by John Deacon, and he isn't the best songwriter because mostly he writes the, the weakest tracks. Um, well, except for later in the 80s, but um, but maybe I'm gonna do it later if it is requested. But you and I is a bit of a weak song, I would say. Uh, there are some really nice bass grooves by uh, by John Deacon on this track, but uh, besides that, the song falls a bit fat, uh, flat on his face, and it doesn't really go anywhere. I I think the the bass is still great, but John Deacon didn't really uh, um, let the other band members breathe on this track. It was pure him, and he didn't he didn't think to himself, um, um, yeah, I, sh I should do this. I should uh, write a uh, drum beat for uh, Roger Taylor. Um, he mostly thought about the bass, and it is really tight, the bass, but the other instruments are are a bit messy. But, it, you know, it, it is still a decent track to, uh, to close out side one, but I think U9 isn't the best track. 
Uh, speaking of the best tracks, we have si we have the opener of Saito, which is Somebody to Love. I, I mean, everyone knows this song. This is basically the Bohemian Rhapsody of Day at the Races, and uh, I'm, I mean, this song doesn't even close, um, doesn't even touch Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean, uh, what song does? But this song is tremendous. I really love the, the, the opening piano on this track. I really love the, the soaring vocals by Freddie Mercury, the, the chorus. Can anybody love me? Somebody to love. Just, uh, yeah, just the centerpiece of the record. Just when Freddie Mercury comes back with his vocals at the end. It is just a really special track. And I think it is a bit of a You Take My Breath Away part two, but then uh, with more instruments in there. And I think that is really the perfect way to uh, to play Queen song with all the band members involved. With, uh, um, yeah. This song is just a classic, and also George Michael has uh, sung on this song. I believe in the 80s or 90s, when, uh, or the 90s, I believe, when Freddie Mercury passed away. He, uh, he did a tribute with Somebody to Love. So I, um, I, I remember that I first didn't like that, but now I eventually love it because I love George Michael. And, but yeah, you. You know what they say about the originals, you can't, beat the you, you can't beat the original and you know, George Michael did a great job on this part, but uh, Freddy is the man and you're never going to beat Mercury, no, no one is, no one is. Uh, White Man is a bit of a strange track, um, uh, yeah, the, the title itself is a bit strange, I, I think, yeah, White Man, I'm not really sure what they're talking about, uh, the lyrics are a bit strange. Um, I wouldn't say racist, but they are a bit in a uh, written in a strange way. I um, yeah, uh, this is not the the most polished song, and it isn't a really good follow up to uh, Somebody to Love. Um, yeah, I still think there there are some great um, some great guitar moves by uh, Brian May because he is the writer of the song. Uh, the bass is really really tight, but uh, Freddie Mercury is a bit all over the place and. Yeah, I mean the drumming is uh, it, it is all right, but he, uh, Roger did it better on other tracks. Uh, good old fa good old fashioned lover boy is a really simplistic track, and this is also the shortest uh, track of the record, uh, two minutes and fifty four seconds. Yeah, uh, this is mainly Mercury and uh, May who sing really tight on this track, uh, but I don't like the tone of the t of the song. I, I don't like that it is uh, a bit too poppy for me. Uh, Mercury and May are a bit uh, too in front with each other. Uh, they are of course the main lead guys of the band. I, I understand that, but they don't let Roger Taylor and John Deacon breathe on this track, which I think is a bit, uh, a bit of a shame because Roger and John Deacon are, are one of the best um, in instruments, um, instrument players of their respected instrument, if you can understand that. But I, but I think this is a Mercury and May song. And it is a bit too poppy in a sense, and there are not enough uh, guitar solos, so actually Freddie Mercury doesn't, doesn't let the entire band read but himself. Uh, but I still think it is a good song, but it is a bit too poppy for me, I would say. Uh, yeah, Drowse. Um, yeah, this, this song says it all. It, it lets me drowse. Uh, this song is written by Roger Taylor, and um, I think together with you and I, it is the weakest track of the uh, record. Um, yeah, Roger Taylor and John Deacon. You know, I love the guys, I love uh, how they play their instrument, they're great at that, but the songwriting, it isn't the best. Um, yeah, just let um, just let Mercury and May do that. Yeah, the, the, just this song is just a bit of a drowse. I don't think it is uh, great, you know. It, it isn't a bad song, but it is definitely uh, one of the weaker, the weaker tracks. Roger Taylor also has the lead vocals in there. And he is a great singing drummer, but he was a bit off on this track. Um, yeah, um, I, I enjoy his drumming, but you know, his singing was a bit off on this track. Um, he has some great, great singing uh, melodies on other tracks. I can't name any, but uh, he, he has them. He is a great singing drummer, but he was a bit off on uh, Drowse. And then we have the last song, Tio Toriate, Let Us Cling Together, which is uh, written by May, lead vocals by Mercury. Uh, yeah, this is also the longest song of the record, f 5 minutes and 50 seconds, and this is a bit dragged out, I would say. Uh, the song itself is uh, still a pretty good one, but the song just drags a bit on at the end. 
still love the uh, the first two three minutes of the song but then it uh, goes a bit in a slur doesn't really know what it wants to be um, so yeah uh, this song is overall it has some really catchy riffs it has some really good hooks but overall Mercury's vocals are a bit uh, buried down in the mix and the lead guitar is really good but uh, you can't hear anything else really on this track and when uh, Brian May fades away you uh, John Deacon doesn't play for some reason so I'm not sure uh, why that is a thing um, yeah some uh, Roger Taylor has some great moments on there and I believe he um, he does some great backup vocals while well, he does backup vocals on, on the entire record I believe but um, um, yeah just overall I think this is a good uh, closing song but you know doesn't even come close to uh, the first two songs and um, somebody to love uh, overall I think this is a good record I yeah I, I think it depends when I uh, a few years ago I I thought that this was on par with a night at the opera but well I've re-listened to it again and it isn't I still think I still think it is a good record. I still really love the uh, the first uh, six songs. I would say the side one is uh, pretty good, and um, somebody to love is easily the highlight of the entire record. I uh, really, really uh, think those are great songs, but the last four songs didn't really do anything for me. So I would give this record a um, an eight point. Um, I would give it an 8.8. .8. I still think it is a really good record. But you know it isn't perfect. Side 2 is a bit inconsistent. Side 1 is pretty perfect. But uh, but yeah. Uh, not the entire record is perfect. But I still think it is a highlight in their career. And um, yeah I still really enjoy it. So let me know what you think about the Day at the Races. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Uh, let me know what you think about it. And take care.